What's up guys, the initial plan with this video was just to make one big video, but it just ended up getting way too big, so I split them up into two. And you'll see me throughout these next two videos talking as if it was one large video, so just don't get confused and enjoy the video. What's up guys, my name is Forrest Knight and welcome to IDEV Journey episode 7. We are going to finish up section 2. Now I know I said something about section 2 before and said that I just kind of would skim through it a little bit, but I went more in depth into section two. There are, I believe, three exercises that we're going to go over in this video. At least you're going to see my solutions. I don't want to make a super long video. Like last video was like 23 minutes and I don't know. I want to keep mine between 10 and 15 minutes. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we're going to do at least one completely, you know, maybe like last time, you know, fast forward through a couple like simple parts or repeats. And then I'll show my solutions uh, to the other two exercises. And then also the beginning of section three is GitHub. We'll be doing that next week. And I've already started that, but it starts off with an exercise. So I just figured I'd end it with, with section two and then pick up next week. I want, to, I want to make section three one whole video for next week. So I have a lot, I have a lot of work to do. So let's get to it. And lecture 18, I discussed this two videos ago. A little bit it's uh, functions functions aren't really that difficult uh, where we're at right now you know you're going to be able to use more complex functions using with uh, with other problems down the line but right now with this, the problems that we're doing it's not really all too difficult and although although I've already like known it know a little bit about functions from C++ Mark puts it into really good terms and it's very very helpful the way he teaches and it definitely helped helped functions and what they're all about stick in my brain better the way he explained it, which I, which is saying a lot. Lecture 19, we went over uh, bools and conditional logic, and the main things to, uh, to take note are the, uh, the conditionals or whatever, whatever they're called. So right here, as you can see, equal, equal. So this equals is when you compare two things. These are all the operators, I guess I'll call them. Um, Let's go to the computer and I'll show you, I'll give you guys an example of each one. So here are some examples of the Boolean operators. So before we get into that, uh, just take a look up here. This is your guide. So equal to is two equal signs, not equal to is exclamation point equal sign, greater than and, and less than, and all these are kind of self-explanatory. So what we did first is we, did, we made a variable named bank balance. Bank balance equals $400 and item to buy equals $500. So what we do is if bank balance is greater than or equal to item to buy, then we can purchase the item. In this case, we can't. So imagine if this if this was 500 and this was 400, then we would be able to do that. But we can't because we don't have enough money. So this is just giving you a real world example. For greater than, if item to buy is greater than bank balance, then what you print out is say you don't have enough money or go get a job or something like that because you don't have enough money to buy what you're trying to buy so you're going to get rejected unless you know you you go negative in your bank account but who wants that so that's an example of greater than or equal to and then greater than and then and then equal to if item to buy equals bank balance uh, we'd probably want to let those people know that they have zero dollars. So if it's exactly 500 like this up here, 500, 500, then it would print out this. And we would want to let them know that their bank balance is now zero. And then I couldn't find a good uh, not equal to on that one. I, I wanted to give you guys a better example. So say you're in a, in a library or, or something like that and you're look, trying to check out a book and you search on their, uh, I forget what it's called, but that, that library software that they, that you're able to uh, track all the books in and search and see if it, it's in stock and whatnot. So here we have two book titles. Uh, the real book title is Think and Grow Rich. The title that you typed in is Think and Go Reach. And maybe you misheard it, you misspelled it, you're thinking of something else, but you spelled it wrong. So if book title one does not equal book title two, we have to let the person know that book's not found, check your spelling. So there's different ways to say like if you're if you're close you know if you're this close then it would recommend this but we're just doing the basics where if it's not equal then the, if the book is not found we can't find the book that you're searching for check your spelling and those are the examples of those and you'll understand you understand if it's uh, less than or equal to just to say we switch these two around or we could even just 
go like this. But like I said, yeah, we would have to switch these two around, so forget about that. So that's how those Boolean operators work. And right now we're gonna get into exercise, the first one for this video, functions. So the first thing to do, create a new Xcode Playground, done. Uh, create a function named add that takes two parameters of type double and returns the sum of the two numbers. So we wanna create a function named add, that's not right, add. We can name these uh, num1 and then it said it wants to be a double. So we do it like that and then we do num2. You can name whatever you want, but that's just what I'm gonna name this for sake of argument. And then within it, what did it want us to do? It wanted us to return the sum of the two numbers. So we could do return num1 plus num2 and I don't, yeah, you don't need a colon or anything, so that should be right, right? No, maybe not. Maybe not right. Would I have to send this over like this? Make that a double like that. So that should work, right? So I don't see that's returning anything, but let's, let's go on to the next deal. Sometimes this is slow for me, so I just have to keep it moving and then uh, I'll come back to it in a bit. So that was question two, wait, all right, so question one, question two, now question three, create a function named subtract that takes two parameters of type, integ so integers and returns the difference of the two numbers. So basically, we're just doing the same thing but subtracting. And then we just return it, same exact way as last time but subtracting. But what did it want us to do? Returns the difference of the two numbers, so. Oh, that's right, what we didn't do is assign numbers to the actual variables, correct? See, I'm still having trouble with this reader over here because it still says Hello Playground, but it's obviously not Hello Playground. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna exit out of this and then, and then I'm gonna paste it back in. Hopefully that'll fix it. So now it shouldn't have, I don't think it should have anything because we haven't declared num1 to be any type of number except for a double. So basically the next thing we do is the same exact thing, but we multiply floats and then after that we're going to divide double. So let's just hurry up and do that already. So, because it's really not that difficult. And then what we're going to do next is all of those functions, all of those, what does it say? All of those functions and pass different values into the parameters and ensure they are producing the correct results. Uh, is this a miss? I don't know. This may be a misprint. <laughs> but so basically we're giving all these numbers. Uh, okay. So it looks like it wants us to assign these it wants us to reference or, or call these functions into a situation where we are actually declaring the numbers. So we can use var or let. Let's just do let, but make it nice and neat. Let, uh, I don't think I can use add. Let's do let plus add. But these are doubles, so actually let's not do that. Let's do 3.3. Uh, I think I have to put an equal sign there, maybe? Yeah. Okay, and now it, it goes back up and says, oh, this is the last thing that num1 and num2 equaled within this function. We just do that with all of them, let minus. And make num2 equal seven. And we'll see that this doesn't work because it needs to be an integer, integer to an integer. So if we take these out, it works. So eight, eight minus seven, eight minus three, 
even if we put a double over here, it won't work because obviously they're declared it to be an integer. It hasn't changed yet until I get out of there. As you can see, there's errors. There's an error right here. It just didn't change right here. Three. A foot can only hold like so many bytes. It's only it's only so many bytes worth while a double is 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 a lot bigger than a float so normally they say use a use a double some people would like to say oh no I want to use a float because it's going to use less memory well it's not worth it in the long run I mean if you need to change it that means you'd have to go back and change the float and the only reason you need to do that is just if there's an error in your code so so I think that's it it just wanted us to throw values in there, make sure it worked each and every way, made sure that the double worked right, or made sure, first of all, made sure that our function worked right, made sure that we declared it correctly in order for, you know, two doubles to come out as a double, and in order for us to only be allowed to put in doubles there as well as integer float and double again. Now lecture 21 is constants and logical operators, where before we had like Boolean operators where you know, you had the two equal signs, greater than, greater than, equal to, less than, less than, or equal to. But now we have the logical operators, which are and, or, and not. So, and is a double ampersand, or is double pipes, and not is an uh, exclamation point before uh, the word or the... This is how you may know how to do it. You may know how to do it like this if yada yada is not equal to this then you know you do whatever's in the parentheses or you know you could do else yada yada the better way to do that is like this so you just put the exclamation point before this word and you don't even have to worry about that and it means exactly the same thing but it's a lot simpler you know you save you know what six characters of of code <laughs> but it it works out better that way um later down the line just it's better practice supposedly i know i kind of have chicken scratch but you know i'm sitting there listening and i'm just writing it down real quick and it's uh it's it it's what works for me you know i don't need to exactly i know what i write so i can kind of go back here and just reference it i'm not going to sit here and and if allowed entry does not and, that, and that's the thing about learning you have to find what works for you you have to find that's about being taught with anything you know we're not just being taught with anything, but whatever you may do, you know, if you're putting together a desk, I may do it differently than you, but if it gets done either way, you know, one may be more efficient, but if you're going to have more fun or if it's going to be better or easier for you to do it one way than another way, then you have to do it that way. So you have to learn how to adapt to certain situations in your own way. You can't always just learn from somebody else and then just regurgitate everything that they just taught you you have to you have to figure out ways for you to use it so it stays up here and so that it, it it translates onto the paper or onto your computer in a way that you want to portray it so just a little tidbit of information there <laughs>